So, 25 years ago, Princess Diana's bombshell interview with Martin Bashir sent shockwaves around the world, didn't it? The interview is back in the headlines at the moment with allegations that documents were forged to convince Diana to do it. Something that the BBC has denied. Well, tonight sees the first episode of a two-part documentary looking back at that interview, which was full of astonishing revelations about Diana's marriage. Well, my next guest both contributed to tonight's documentary, The Diana Interview, Revenge of a Princess, is what it's been called. Former Royal Correspondent Jenny Bond and Tony Poole, the cameraman, who was one of the few people in the room back in 1995. Um, if I could talk to you first, Jenny, that, that was the moment, wasn't it, that we all remember. But Diana had actually told you that when the two of you met in person shortly beforehand. She'd, she'd said that to you, that there were three people in her marriage. She did indeed. She told me an awful lot of what was in Panorama uh, five months before. We, we had a long meeting, just the two of us at Kensington Palace in, in her sitting room. And I asked her all sorts of really quite impudent questions, I suppose. Um, and so what was in Panorama was, was largely known to me, but she had, had asked me to keep it all in confidence. I got, got notebooks of, of that meeting. I, I didn't take notes at the time, but I went outside like any journalist and wrote everything down. I've got one here, actually. And it is June 95, so five months before. And right at the top, she, I've written, she says there were always, from day one, three people in the marriage. She means Camilla. And she said she now understands that the relationship between Charles and Camilla was and is one of true love, and that it was always going to be stronger than any marriage Charles might have made. So she was very forthcoming in that interview with me, uh, but she asked me, um, annoyingly, I have to say, to keep it confidential. And you did. You, you, you know, you, you, you absolutely did. I mean, well, she asked you to. So why? And it's still, of course, creating front page news today. The, the male are not letting go of this story and all of these accusations. What do you make of this? Yeah, well, 25 years on, obviously, television companies and other uh, media outlets have been um, foraging to, for, for new facts. And under the Freedom of Information Act, they've established that the BBC did have an inquiry, which I didn't know about um, in 1996, into Martin Bashir's methods, should we say. Mm. Um, there was a document which the BBC accept um, was forged, a bank statement which was meant to persuade Earl Spencer, Diana's brother, uh, that the security that, that the security forces basically were paying one of his staff for information. Uh, this has provoked Earl Spencer to come out with a load of handwritten notes. And remember, he was a journalist himself of meetings he had and the princess had with uh, Martin Bashir, in which uh, the Earl alleges uh, Martin made a series of quite fantastic allegations about members of the royal family and about the courtiers, all intended, it would seem, to persuade Diana that she was under the greatest surveillance and maybe in some danger. It's astonishing, isn't it, 25 years on? And Tony, you were there, you were one of the few people in there. How did they, what I'm interested in is, how, how did they actually, what was the cover story for you to come into the palace? What did they tell everyone? Um, Martin had um, arranged this cover story that uh, three uh, hi-fi salesmen were going to be visiting. I think that was just for the people on the security uh, gate at Kensington Palace. So uh, I had on view in the back of the car cardboard boxes that had um, hi-fi equipment supposedly in them, but in fact they had uh, cables and all sorts of bits and bobs that I needed to um, to set up the interview. Well, it's, it must have been for you the pressure to get that right, Tony, because obviously you didn't have as big a crew as you normally would do on an interview like that, a prestigious interview like that. So you were having to get make sure that everything was OK. Where, you know, did you feel... I mean, obviously, there's a little bit of nerves. You're doing this massive story. But how, how did you feel about it at the time? Uh, it, it, it was apprehension, actually, because... Um, I was the only crew. Um, there was a producer present and Martin, and that, that was it. So uh, it had to be right. There, there'd been no uh, recce of Kensington Palace, so um, I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know what to expect. Um, so it was apprehension, I suppose, uh, thinking that I've got to get this one right because this is, uh, this is the biggest and most important uh, bit of filming that I think I will ever do. Um, so uh, it was apprehension rather than 
um, nerves, if, right. if that makes sense. No, it, it does. And you, you know you have to get this one. You have to nail this one. How was she? What was her demeanour? What was her manner? Did she seem nervous or apprehensive at all? Or was she, you know, was she pretty sort of feeling as if, yeah, I just want to get this done? Oh, uh, she was absolutely relaxed. And um, what I did find when we, uh, when Martin introduced Mike and myself, Mike, the producer, and myself to her, um, uh, she made me feel at ease. She, uh, everybody says that she had this um, incredible knack of being able to put people at ease. And that's precisely what she did. Um, uh, and um, so in that sense... Um, I wasn't starstruck or anything like that. It, it was just relaxed. She was so relaxed and she made uh, me and the rest of us feel relaxed as well. Did you feel that she was very rehearsed? Did, that, did it come across as that? No. No, it didn't. Um, whilst I was setting up with Mike's help, um, she and Martin were in the kitchen chatting. Um, so having arrived at 730 we didn't uh, we didn't start filming until after nine, as I recall. So all that time, Martin would have been talking to Diana in the kitchen. So if you call that being rehearsed, maybe, but um, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess they must have gone over the areas that um, they were going to cover. But she came over as utterly relaxed and at ease. It, uh, that's how I felt. And afterwards, right afterwards, did you just pack up and go away? Or was there any sort of, I don't know, not celebration as such, but relief that it was over? <laughs> yeah, um, she opened a bottle of champagne at the end of it all, um, which um, the three of them had, but uh, I had a long drive back to West Sussex. So um, sadly, it, it sounds so goody-goody, really, but I couldn't risk having a drink, I'm afraid. Well, you were quite right. You were quite right, Tony. And Jenny, there's been some suggestions that if, if Diana hadn't done this interview, because after she did the interview, that's when the Queen said, look, you guys, divorce has got to happen. Um, if she hadn't done the interview, maybe they might have got back together again. And maybe, you know, if you take it to a further stage, she would have still had protection and she wouldn't have died. Yeah, that, that is a possible route. I think it's unlikely. I think, you know, the very fact that she did tell me so much of this information five months before, I'm not going to pretend I was the only journalist she confided in. I'm sure she confided in others, maybe in Richard Kay, for example, and Dave Mel. Um, so I think she was kind of ready for this to come out, this story. And she also told me, I mean, I asked her a year later, we had a lot of long chat, and I said, yeah, why, why did you ask Martin to do, why did you do Panorama? And she said, I felt that a divorce was looming. Uh, it was going to be inevitable. And I thought there'd be a gagging clause. I wanted to get my side of the story out. Right. Um, and of course, I said, well, you know, why not me, ma'am? Why not me? <laughs> she just said, well, he was there. He was at the right time, right place. So, uh, well, uh, according to some of the, well, particularly the Daily Mail, this is not the end of that, that's for sure. Thank you both very much indeed for talking to me this morning. And the Diana interview, Revenge of a Princess, is on tonight and tomorrow, nine o'clock on ITV. Isn't it astounding that 25 years later, still making the news. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.